Welcome to all the students. Welcome to physics class. Today we are discussing about photoelectric effect. Okay? So we have seen the basics of photoelectric effect in the last class. Removal of electrons from the surface of a metal by supplying energy in the form of light and thereby removing the electrons. And uh, now I say thereby removing the electrons and uh, those electrons which are removed are called photoelectrons. Okay? Now, Leonard and Hallwak, they designed a beautiful setup to explain this photoelectric effect. So, shall we draw the diagram once again? So, it is your job to take the pen and paper and be ready with the, all the things. So, first of all, these emitted electrons and electrons, if they have to be emitted, they should fall on a photosensitive material sub surface, metal. And uh, a sufficient energetic electron, uh, this uh, light has to be taken and you should have an energy more than the work function, that you must know. And work function is the minimum energy required to remove the electron, that also you know. And when these uh, photons fall on the surface, they supply energy to the electrons, electrons come out. And so you should have a surface which can emit electrons. Another one, another anode which will collect the electrons. And all these electrons must be made to move here and there in an evacuated chamber. So basically you need an evacuated chamber, right, like this. Hope you are also doing along with me and you draw this and if you don't draw this then it's a waste better you watch some film movie rather than this one so it is a complete waste right if you watch a movie it is a complete waste of time if the movie is not good and if you watch this you have to do this you shouldn't uh, keep on wasting the time simply by gazing at me what i am doing and what i am saying just keep on do keep along uh, uh, keep uh, watching uh, uh, this diagram and keep doing it along with me, right? It's a cathode. And we are going to connect it to negative. But we can change the positive, uh, the, that polarity of the battery also. Okay, so light from here, a suitable frequency should fall on this surface. And this is ultraviolet and this is the source of light. And we call this a source, source of light and this is ultraviolet light this one and this is quartz window because you know ultraviolet is blocked by glass so that should be quartz this is quartz window and uh, this is evacuated chamber it is made vacuum evacuated chamber right and then uh, what else uh, okay, here should be an anode, okay, and here should be a commutator, you know this, now we can do it fast, because already we have seen it once. So three switches in a row, three connections in a row, today I will take it in a gap, so that uh, you have enough space, and this cathode must be connected to the other end here, right, so this one here, what about the anode, so this is anode, and it should be jumped here like this. Hope you are also doing along with me. So this should be connected here. Then connect the last two terminals cross connection. One here and another one jump here like this. Next be ready with the, a battery and an arrangement to change the current. So a battery here. So I will take it in the same width. So a battery here positive negative positive negative. Okay, I will do it in a row, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative like this and up to this and a resistance wire, long wire where you, you, it is so long and it is wound and you can connect it anywhere you want so that you can change the current. As you select more number of turns in the wire, the current decreases. Okay, that is ready and now you have to connect these two terminals, one here and another one here after making this getting ready. And you should have the current flowing through these wires and you have to measure it and you have to connect an ammeter, micro ammeter, micro in the 10 to the power minus 6 range. So this is the needle that is showing the current inside, this is micro ammeter. And if you want to note any voltage what you have supplied, it is needed later on, right? We are simply taking uh, uh, this circuit again and again in coming two hours also, right? Um, this one here, what else? Finished? Over. This is commutator. 
and uh, what else? Uh, this is plus, minus, and uh, this is uh, here, minus, plus. And electrons emitted will be moving towards the anode. So like this, like this, like this, like this. So these are electrons. Okay. Very simple circuit. So theoretically, if you move, it will be very easy. But if you buy heart, this will be a horrible circuit. You may not be knowing where to connect. And you will connect it any, anywhere else and you will lose the mark. So now the hallmark Leonard's experimental setup over. Now, initially, which switches you are going to close? Of course, you are not going to write it in the exam. And that means you are not going to show it. Let me close these two switches. This one and this one. I'll show it in a different color. Hope you are finished, right? You have finished the drawing. So connect the first two gaps of the commutator. Commutator is a device which will change the direction of current in the circuit. Simply keep the keys in the two ways, uh, two way key, then uh, the current gets reversed automatically. Okay, you have selected this end now, right? Now from the positive, ah, here, if you start from cathode, from the cathode, you have to connect here, of course. If you come down, no, ah, yeah, you can move here. If you come here, no movement, open at both ends. So you have to come here, come like this, like this, like this, like this, negative. So from where did we start? Cathode, right? Cathode to this one, this one, like this. Cathode is negative. What about anode? It should be positive. Like this, here, coming like this, positive. Cathode is negative, anode is positive. As soon as <coughs> light from a light of suitable frequency and energy, of course, falls on the surface, E is equal to H nu is equal to H C by lambda. Falls on the surface. Electrons are emitted from the surface. Electrons as they as soon as they come out, they see the outside world. Oh, it is vacuum. Nobody is there to uh, oppose us. So we can move. And there is somebody who is greeting us. Come on here, and he is welcoming. That is a positive electrode because electrons are negatively charged. This positive potential will attract them. So it attracts it. So electrons come, complete the path and uh, you get a current in the, um, uh, that ammeter, micrometer. Now Hallward and, uh, Hallward and Leonard, they found that the current went on increasing as the intensity of light is increased. They took the same source, they went on increasing the brightness. What do you mean by that? Nu is not changed. C and lambda is not changed. Keeping nu and keeping same energy, same energy of photon. That means I am not changing the source. Same energy of photon means not changing the source. Not changing source. Same source, but, but brightness more. You can supply more and more voltage to this uh, bulb and you can make it brighter and brighter. For example, red light, same red light, more brighter, less brighter, medium brighter. So when the intensity is changed, not changing the source, not changing nu and c, same nu and same c. So these two, uh, sorry, uh, not, not c, lambda, same lambda and same uh, nu. So keeping them same, keeping the same energy per photon, but number of photons are increased. Of course, this is the later explanation I can give. So when intensity is increased, intensity is increased, photoelectric current increases. Photoelectric current increases. This is one conclusion they got. First one, I say. Maybe it no, may not be the first one, but I name it as first one because it came to me and I am explaining it. So when the intensity of the incident light is increased, photoelectric current went on increasing. And how? It was linear. And they draw, did it for different uh, uh, values. When the intensity was so much, they calculated what is the current. They doubled the intensity. The bulb was made double brighter. And uh, the photoelectric current was found to be more. That means more electrons are emitted, correct? And uh, uh, again, the uh, source is made more, three times more brighter, three times more current they have got, more electrons were emitted. So if you draw a graph of photoelectric current, this current versus intensity, that means brightness of the source, they got a graph like this. 
A graph of photoelectric current versus intensity was obtained like this. Okay, that's right. First conclusion. Okay, second one, shall I write it here? I want enough board today. Second one, can you see this? Right, I can, I can write it here and you can see this, yes. Now, they started, uh, started doing the experiment with frequency. They changed the frequency. If you want to change the frequency, you have to change the source itself. Because one source will have one particular frequency. Brightness you can change with the same frequency. But if you want to change the frequency itself, you have to take the light from uh, uh, red color to blue color to uh, yellow color, green color, so like that. You have to change the frequency and wavelength. Okay, when frequency of incident light is changed, say you start from the lowest frequency, some available frequency photoelectrons were not emitted and no photoelectric current was found. Why? Very simple reason. The energy of those photons may not be enough to remove the electrons, isn't it? Increase the frequency. No photoelectrons are found. So I will simply give the examples like this. I will, I will take a source of ultraviolet which has a frequency new one. Even in ultraviolet I can get different frequencies, right? Even in red I can have different red. Even in green in your nature you see different green. So, there are different frequency greens, there are different frequency uh, ultraviolet lights. New one, no photoelectrons are emitted. New two, I will increase it, no photoelectrons are emitted. New three, I see some photoelectrons are emitted, I see some current in the circuit. Okay, so photoelectrons are emitted, say. And this new three, I will take it as new naught and I call it as threshold frequency. What do you mean by threshold frequency? The minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission can take place. Sir, if I increase the frequency further, for example, I will take numerical example itself. Sir, when I took 2 into 10 to the power 14 hertz frequency, frequency is measured in hertz, no photoelectrons are emitted, 2.1 into 10 to the power 14 hertz, no photoelectrons are emitted, because I don't get any current, I can check it. 2.2 .2 into 10 to the power 14 hours. Yes, sir, I get photoelectric current and there are photoelectrons emitted. That means photoelectric emission started from 2.2. .2. What about 2.3 into 10 to the power 14 hours? Yes, there are photoelectrons emitted. Because if 2.2 frequency, 2.2 into 10 to the power 14 hertz frequency can emit electrons means definitely this can emit because E is equal to H nu, E is directly proportional to nu. More the nu, more is the frequency, energy. More is the nu, more the frequency, more the energy. So more and more energetic. What about 2.4 into 10 to the power 14 hertz? Yes, photoelectrons are emitted. That means out of all the photoelectric emission possible frequencies, this is the minimum value, correct? Any value greater than this is far good enough to remove the electrons. Any value less than this is not able to remove the electrons. So, the minimum value of frequency above which photoelectrons are emitted or the minimum value of frequency which can remove the photoelectrons, just remove the photoelectrons is called threshold frequency. So, above the threshold frequency, photoelectrons are emitted, but below the threshold frequency, photoelectrons are not emitted. So, shall I call this as nu naught? Nu naught is the minimum frequency above which photoelectrons are emitted, and that is called threshold frequency. So, if you are asked to define what is threshold frequency, the minimum value of incident frequency above which photoelectric emission is possible or photoelectrons are emitted below which no photoelectrons are emitted is called threshold frequency. Threshold means always the junction value. Below that you don't have, above that you have or vice versa whatever it is true. But here below the threshold frequency no photoelectrons are emitted just at the threshold frequency photoelectrons are emitted above the threshold frequency photoelectrons are emitted. And if you go on increasing the frequency further but there is no change in the uh, uh, photoelectric current. Once you reach the threshold frequency, suddenly you get current. But if you increase the frequency from threshold value, say for example 2.2 in 10 to the power 14 hertz, there is no change in current, but there is current, no change in the current. That means for every material, there is a minimum frequency 
below which no photoelectrons are emitted, above which photoelectrons are emitted and that frequency is called threshold frequency. Now does threshold frequency give any idea? Yes, it gives the idea that there is a minimum energy required to remove the electrons and what do you call that minimum energy as work function remember work function is the uh, minimum energy required to remove the electrons from the uh, surface of a metal and the symbol for work function is phi now can you get phi from this nu naught if nu naught is the minimum frequency required to remove the electrons what is the energy of that photon which is just removing the electrons that is h nu naught because energy is h nu correct what is that h nu naught that should be the work function one formula isn't it so if nu naught can just remove the electrons any frequency less than nu naught cannot more than nu naught okay then that nu naught must be having an energy which is equal to just remove the electron which is called work function so how to convert that nu naught into energy h nu naught that is work function so below the threshold frequency photoelectrons are not emitted above the threshold frequency photoelectrons are emitted but if you go on increasing the frequency from threshold photoelectric current doesn't change okay right now uh, shall i remove anything here yeah keeping uh, yes this is needed first point is needed that is uh, increasing the uh, yeah, brightness intensity here so dip, uh, um, increases the uh, photoelectric current that means photoelectric current depends on that means how much current is produced by the uh, these uh, emitted electrons photoelectric current depends on intensity of the incident light brightness of the uh, 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 incident light it does not depend on current does not depend on frequency isn't it right so this is their conclusion but einstein was able to explain clear, give clear explanation on all these things that we will see later so but you need a minimum frequency for the electrons to come out but once they come out there is enough photoelectric current but you can't change it by increasing the frequency there is a requirement of minimum frequency for removal of electrons. There is a requirement of minimum frequency for photoelectric current. But beyond that threshold frequency, there are photoelectrons coming, but they don't increase the current. So photoelectric current depends on intensity and does not depend on frequency. It is independent of frequency of incident radiation, frequency of incident light. Okay. Now they went for one more experiment. Okay, electrons have come out. <coughs> and these electrons have started moving towards anode and now I want to see whether these emitted electrons have energy or not. It is simply like I can give you the answer now only how did Einstein explain it. It is simply like you moving uh, or you are going to go, going to your uh, grandma's or some uh, somebody's house. You need bus fare. You will ask your father give me the bus fare I want to go to grandma's house. Okay. The bus fare is say uh, some 80 rupees then you are there are more chances your father may give just 80 rupees and your father may give 100 rupees your father may give 200 rupees 300 rupees and so on but if your father gives less than 80 rupees you will never go to grandma's house because that money is not enough to reach your grandma's house correct and sir if I if I my father gives my gives me 60 rupees can't I move just out of 60 rupees how much I can travel by bus I will travel and later I will walk nobody will do that if you are given only 80 or more than 80 you will fix the traveling otherwise if you are given 50 60 40 anything rejected because that is not enough because you are not ready to walk even a smaller uh, distance you want to go by bus only right and of course there are small walking you can do that but kilometers wise you can't walk so 80 rupees is the minimum requirement to reach your grandma's house that is work function once you are given 80 rupees you can move suppose you are given 100 rupees what will you do will you return 20 rupees to your father no you will spend 80 rupees to your traveling as bus ticket and remaining 20 rupees you will enjoy either to purchase anything or to eat something anything right 
suppose you are given 120 rupees you will spare only 80 rupees for traveling and you will enjoy with 40 rupees and if you are given 120, 150 rupees or 120 rupees or 100 rupees nobody will give more money to the conductor saying that my father has given more money to me so please keep 20 rupees with you so you are lucky take it away nobody will give him the traveler will give only 80 rupees to the conductor that is a constant that means work function is a constant for a material the traveling fare is a constant irrespective of the money that you have in your pocket if you have 500 rupees you don't pay 100 rupees as a bus ticket if you have 50 rupees you don't pay 50 rupees as a uh, bus fare you will pay only 80 rupees it is it does not depend on how much money you have in your pocket so work function depends on the material the traveling expense depends on the distance through which you travel the house to which where you have to travel it doesn't depend on the incident frequency right so if you have more and more money then what the money you will remain with will become more if you have 200 rupees in your pocket definitely you will remain with 120 rupees if you have only 100 rupees in your pocket you will remain with only 20 rupees after the journey if you have 150 rupees in your pocket you will remain with 70 rupees in your uh, pocket so the remaining money goes on increasing now the thing happening here is same electrons are simply sitting inside the material they are waiting for somebody to supply energy they are waiting whether the energy comes in the form of heat light or so though they expect that the energy comes in the form of light photons come and supply energy to them and they can jump and come out but how much energy they need to come out that is called work function that is constant so somebody will supply the energy in the form of ultraviolet radiations and photons of ultraviolet will fall on them and they are sitting inside they absorb the energy from the ultraviolet photons they come out now they first check whether that energy is enough or not if the energy is enough if the frequency is enough 2.2 into 10 to the power 14 hours if the frequency is threshold frequency that is just enough to come out they will come out and they will simply stand like this why reason is very simple what the energy we have supplied is just threshold frequency energy that is h nu naught that can just remove the electron and the emitted electron will have no pi psi in its pocket no nothing remaining you have only 80 rupees given by your father and you have only 80 rupees for traveling you don't have anything left in your pocket once you get get out of the bus in your grandma's house so if the supplied energy is equal to the work function emitted electrons will not have any energy left with at all suppose the supplied energy is more and more and more 2.3 into 10 to the power 14 2.4 into 10 to the power 14 2.5 3 into 10 to the power 14 so, so on then what the electrons with that remaining energy do that is very interesting suppose the supplied energy uh, required energy is 10 joules and you are supplying 15 joules what 5 joules will happen what happens to 5 joules electrons use that energy as kinetic energy very simple they require they use the enough amount of energy to come out not more only that much required to come out what you call work function remaining energy is used as kinetic energy they start moving that's why they move and moreover this positive anode will attract them that is different but another thing is they start moving here and there and usually electrons will have kinetic energy just opposite to the way in which light is falling when the light falls from here electrons are not emitted from back side they are emitted from front side only electrons come out and they start moving with what kinetic energy that depends on incident energy this is what einstein studied he made, gave a equation very simple equation you see suppose you have you are given 150 rupees you will spend 80 rupees for traveling 70 rupees will remain equation how is the equation 150 is equal to 80 plus 70 that's all if you supply some amount of energy among that a little amount of energy is used to remove the electrons from the surface of the metal and remaining energy is used as kinetic energy that means as you supply more and more and more more frequency as you as you use a source of more and more frequency remember i am not increasing the brightness i am increasing only frequency don't get confused brightness means i am choosing the same frequency increasing the number of photons that's all when i use more and more frequency 
and uh, the energy of the incoming uh, light will go on increasing energy of the emitted electrons goes on go on increasing so incident frequency increase will increase the kinetic energy of electrons not the current sir why don't current increase what do you mean by current current is the rate of flow of charges how many charges flow per second that is current if current has to increase you should increase the number of photons sir how to increase the number of photons can't i increase the frequency no if you are increasing the frequency means you are emitting the same number of photons but more energetic photons because increasing the frequency 100 photons means 100 photons only but each photon will have more energy that's all that will not increase current i want for current i want more photons not more energetic photon more number of photons so when i increase the frequency of course if you are getting confused just keep on uh, following me you, at the end you will uh, understand so if you increase the frequency of incident radiation kinetic energy of the emitted electrons will increase because only that much which is used for removing the electrons that is used as work function and removing the remaining energy will be kinetic energy so if supply is more definitely kinetic energy is more right now the question is how to measure this kinetic energy of course if you increase the brightness here current will increase that can be noted down how because you can see the current more the brightness more the intensity of light more the current you have drawn it right more the current uh, sorry more the intensity of light more will be the current a graph flowing from zero when there is no intensity no brightness means what is the meaning of no brightness no light at all switch off the light what is the brightness zero no brightness means no photons falling no photoelectric current no photo uh, electric effect at all so no current but when you increase the frequency kinetic energy is increasing how to study this that part we will take care of today how do you say that kinetic energy increases so to see to check the kinetic energy of electrons uh Hall, hallwork and leonard did one beautiful experiment right we will spend three sessions in this experiment so that in the examination you can beautifully write it we have enough time and some people say that uh, um, uh, uh, so many chapters are over in uh, some college there and this don't worry we have enough amount of time we can study properly and we can move through right so because uh, you have if you understand the theory properly then remain remembering it for a long time is not a big task okay L right uh, where we are now yes I want to check the kinetic energy of electrons very simple procedure what you have to do sir I want to see whether that car is moving with more kinetic energy whether this bicycle is moving with more kinetic energy what can I do sir simple procedure stand in front of car once stand in front of bike once you will understand which is having more kinetic energy why because if the car comes with a speed and hits to you what damages it will do on you and how, what pain you will get and when the bicycle comes and hits to you what damages it will do on you and what the pain you will get that will be directly proportional to the kinetic energy of the car kinetic energy of the uh, that bicycle very simple that means try to stop them you will come to know how much energetic they are isn't it for example if this is a hill say in the rainy season some stones are just tumbling down the hill like this different sized stones now if you want to stop the stones what you have to do you have to some people are standing here imagine imagine that we are very strong we can stop those stones and they have to like this and you have to stop it right you need more energy to stop heavier heavier stones because they will have having more kinetic energy what about smaller smaller stones less energy is enough now if you have a person who can stop smaller stones of course he can't stop heavier stones because they will have more energy now you have to select a person who can stop the highest energetic stone can't he stop less energetic stones definitely he can stop isn't it so a person who can stop the most energetic stone can also stop the less energetic stones so on an average if you can st uh, if you can calculate the energy of the most energetic stone that will give you the highest energy among all the stones and now you can stop any stone which is having lesser energy 
same thing you have to ha make it here now what you have to do is you have to stop these electrons electrons are coming with kinetic energy you just stop it if you want to know how the cricket ball is hit with what energy stop it you will come to know how much faster it was moving how much harder it hits your hands so is the kinetic energy similarly if you want to stop these electrons who will stop it now shall we stand here and stop all the electrons like this not possible who will stop it battery battery will do it what the battery have to do is you have to reverse the battery when you reverse the battery you can uh, stop the electrons which are moving right so how to do this how to stop these uh, energetic electrons battery can do that how the battery can do it very simple we have the help of the commutator you can reverse the commutator how to reverse the commutator sir simply throw the switch to the other opposite corners that's enough simply throw these switches here so one switch here another switch here and you can throw it here connect these two enough that is the beauty of commutator now what has happened last time this was negative this was positive correct now see them negative coming like this like this like this like this this is positive now positive did you get that cathode coming like this like this like this coming over here positive what about this one anode anode coming over like this here like this here like this here like this negative this is negative can you follow this anode coming over here just we have changed this switch last time it was here so now this is here and you have to go here 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 negative now anode is negative and cathode is positive we have reversed the potential now we have to so what is our aim now our aim is to stop the electrons and find out how much energetic they are and in the first chapter of the second view you get a definition and for those who have not who, who, this is not over just see that definition we always i will explain uh, about two minutes for that uh, i will take some uh, few minutes and then you will understand what do you mean by battery voltage potential difference of a battery we say uh, sir i have purchased a battery of 5 volt i have purchased a cylindrical battery of 1.5 volt what do you mean by potential difference of a battery see battery has to do the work in sending the charges suppose you connect a battery to a uh, bulb bulb glows right and if you have a switch and all like this as soon as the switch is closed the bulb glows why because electrons have started moving from negative of the battery to the positive so electrons move like this and we call it as current like this current is the rate of flow of charges and battery will do the work in sending these electrons electrons are already in the conducting wires and the tungsten filament and all battery will do battery will do the work in pushing them work done by the battery in sending the charges so potential difference of any battery is the work done by the battery in sending the charges work per charge is the potential difference joule per coulomb charge is coulomb that is the definition of potential difference so we must have a small deviation here and those who have completed this chapter just recall it those who have not just follow this this is enough so potential difference of any battery or potential difference between any two points is the work done by the battery in sending the charges from one point to another work done by the uh, battery in sending the charges work per unit charge that is potential difference what is the work done then work done is equal to uh, potential difference into charge charge is the q work is w if you take it like this this is the famous formula that you have to do charge into potential difference for example if a battery sends one electron from one end to the other end if the potential difference of the battery is 10 volt what is the work done sir if the potential difference of the battery is 10 volt and if it sends one electron charge of one electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs then uh, the work done is uh, 16 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules this is the work done by the cell so every battery will have its own potential difference that means its own ability to send the charges work done by it to send the charges so every battery will do the work in sending the charges as long as this battery is connected this bulb glows because battery will keep on moving the charges and as soon as the battery is disconnected this doesn't glow because the electron flow stops now coming back over here now this is uh, 
oppositely connected electrons have been removed from the cathode but cathode has become positive those electrons are attracted towards the cathode but still they may have enough amount of energy because uh, sufficiently high kinetic energy uh, sufficiently high energetic beam may be incident on the surface and these electrons may be coming out and they will be going towards anode but anode is given negative potential but still these electrons can move and uh, uh, move towards the anode so will the current become zero that's my question now will the current become zero no because even though this is negative that negative voltage given by this uh, may not be enough to stop these electrons even if you have a person here the strength of that person may not be enough to stop these stones isn't it so what we have to do sir increase this if you put an arrow mark over a battery in electronics it does mean that you can change the value of the battery you can change it from 1 volt 2 volt 3 volt 4 volt like this now the question is i will do the experiment like this hallwalk and linard did the experiment like this they choose a sufficiently strong energetic uh, uh, beam of light father has given you enough amount of money 150 right 150 rupees for traveling you need 80 rupees but your father has given 150 so how much you need uh, how much you have as kinetic energy 70 you have enough energy so you can emit you, uh, you get uh, come out of the cathode you must start moving now i will start increasing this from zero volt zero volt means this is zero this is zero nothing is given battery is stopped uh, switched off electrons happily reach here nobody is opposing and increase this increase the negative potential this becomes negative you know this is reversed right this is given here of course in the examination you are not going to show any connection here you are just uh, that uh, valuer will come to know that you have changed it okay this is given negative now increase it as this is given negative electrons get surprised somebody who is welcoming us earlier now we, they are just opposing us don't come here go away go away because uh, uh, you don't come here i am negative potential electrons you repel me so electrons start repelling but the energy of the electrons may be very sufficient to overcome this repelling force and they may reach here because we have supplied nf energetic ray here photons here and that energy may be sufficient to remove the electrons as well as electrons will have sufficient energy remaining with them so the, without that remaining energy they will be moving with high kinetic energy and they may be reaching here they won't be carrying for this negative so what we will do we will increase this zero minus one volt minus two volt we will do minus two means it is already minus it is connected in such a way that we get minus because it was not in the other way so minus two volt now out of the coming electrons some electrons may find it difficult to reach here because their energy may not be enough to reach the anode but some energy electrons may be sufficiently energetic and they may reach this anode you may get a small doubt here i will i will raise that doubt later and i will solve it so some electrons may reach here some electrons may not reach here what happens to the photoelectric current goes on decreasing right it goes on decreasing and decreasing and decreasing now as i go to minus 3 volt few more electrons cannot reach here but in among the all electrons some more some electrons may be still energetic and they may reach here and they may complete the path and they may produce current even though this is negative potential even for minus 3 volt say when i make it for minus 4 volt current becomes zero what do you mean by that does it mean that photoelectric effect is not occurring no photoelectric effect is beautifully occurring light is falling on this electrons are emitted but electrons are not given any welcome from this because that is given sufficient negative potential and that negative potential is sufficient enough to stop the final electron also and this person is strong enough to stop the strongest stone itself strongest stone in the sense and it's most energetic stone itself and this person can stop any energetic stone because even the less energetic stones may be stopped by him because he was able to stop the most energetic stone itself this potential reverse potential of this anode anode should be given positive actually but anode is given negative the reverse potential of the anode can stop all the photoelectrons 
photoelectric current becomes zero. Photoelectric current becomes zero, not because that the photoelectrons are not emitted, they are emitted, they are stopped by the reverse potential of the anode. Now, how much energy this anode is spending in stopping the electrons? Is it not the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons? Because those electrons are stopped. In the beginning itself, I was saying, <coughs> if you want to know what is the kinetic energy of a car, go and stand in front of the car and try to stop it. What energy you spend in stopping it is the energy of the car. If you haven't stopped it means you have not given enough energy to stop it. So if you have stopped it means you have given enough energy to stop it. What energy you have lost is the energy of the car. Similarly, minus 4 volt can stop all the electrons. That means this minus 4 volt is the energy in some, some or other way, it is not exactly energy, is the energy spent by this uh, uh, anode to stop the, or energy spent by the battery to stop the electrons. Now how to convert this 4 volt into energy which is equal to kinetic energy of the electrons? Very simple, come back to this. Work done is equal to charge into potential difference. Now in this our experiment, who did work? to stop the electrons. Is it not the battery? Because we have reversed battery and made these electrons to stop. We have opposed the electrons, repelled the electrons by giving negative potential. Negative potential is given by the battery. So how much work is done by the battery in stopping the electron? Work done by the battery is equal to charge into potential difference, right? Charge into potential difference. Work done by the pot uh, battery is charge, charge of the electron, 1.602 in 10 to the power minus 19. Potential difference, that is this one, I will call this as V0. What is V0? V0 is called stopping potential. One more definition. Don't worry, I will tell you how to put all these things as an answer in the exam. I haven't put what type of questions will be asked. Sir, we are discussing from two hours, two sessions, the same thing. What about the answers that we are going to write? I will tell you what the answers you will have to write, what are the definitions, but listen to the teaching and listen to the idea behind this. Then we will put the questions and answers, okay? Okay, so work done is equal to charge into potential difference, work done is charge is the charge of the electron into potential difference is V0 and V0 is called stopping potential. Sir, what about minus 5 volt? For minus 5 volt, will you get photoelectric current? Never, because minus 4 volt itself can stop all the electrons means. What about minus 5 volt? It can also stop all the electrons. If this man can stop all the, the heaviest and the uh, and most energetic stone means, if a person stronger than him can stop anyway, right? So, this is uh, the uh, minimum potential required. The minimum reverse potential required. Can 5 volt stop it? Yes. 6 volt? Yes. Out of all these, this is the minimum which is required. Which can stop? This cannot stop. Right? So, the minimum reverse potential of the anode, which can stop all the photoelectrons reaching the anode, that is called stopping potential. Now, what you can calculate from stopping potential? Work, uh, this uh, stopping potential, uh, you can calculate uh, kinetic energy of the electrons and this is work done by the battery, that is equal to kinetic energy of the electrons, right? Well, this is work done by battery, it is not work function, don't confuse, it is work done by the battery in stopping the electrons, so it should be kinetic energy of the electrons. Work done by you in stopping your, uh, uh, sorry, so stopping a car, it is the kinetic energy of the car. So, uh, kinetic energy of photoelectrons is given by EV0, where V0 is the stopping potential. Stopping potential is the re minimum reverse potential of the anode at which all the photoelectrons are stopped reaching the anode. Even though the photoelectrons are emitted, this is not given positive potential. If it is given positive potential, electrons happily reach here. This is given a reverse potential such that all the electrons are stopped reaching the anode and that is stopping potential and from stopping potential you can measure kinetic energy of photoelectrons that is EV0. Don't forget these formulas, only small formulas. So EV0 is the kinetic energy of photoelectrons. Now you can measure kinetic energy of photoelectrons using this formula EV0. Now, my question is now coming to the most important part if you have followed this. So, we have two things now. Threshold frequency. What do you mean by threshold frequency? 
it is the minimum frequency required for the photoelectric emission to happen right here where is threshold frequency we have removed it so h nu not right so if you incident a frequency which is less than uh, uh, required one no electrons are emitted so there is a minimum frequency that i was discussing 2.2 into 10 to the power 14 hertz there is a minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission can take place can take place so there is a minimum frequency where i can write it yes i will write it here there is a minimum frequency called nu not above which photoelectric function take can take place so work function work function is equal to h nu not right what about stopping potential the minimum reverse potential of the anode which can stop all the photoelectrons reaching the anode and make the photoelectric current zero remember at this time photoelectric emission is not happening but we are stopping all the electrons by using a reverse potential so what does stopping potential give kinetic energy of photoelectrons now stopping potential depends on what that is the question if you have understood you can understand you can go on thinking stopping potential depends on what does it depend on frequency of incident radiation for example uh, i will give the that uh, live example you will be left with the 80 rupees sorry 70 rupees if your father gives you 150 rupees because traveling charge is 80 rupees father gives you 150 you will give 80 rupees to bus and 70 rupees will remain suppose your father gives 200 rupees then you will be left with the 120 rupees so remaining money goes on increasing that is kinetic energy now if you are having more and more remaining money you will be more and more happy imagine that you are running to your grandma's house more and more faster suppose your father gives only 80 rupees to you you will give 80 rupees to the conductor and you will go to the grandma's house with the very uh, very pale face right and uh, if you are given uh, 150 rupees you will be having 80 rupees and you will be going like this and if you are given 200 rupees you will have 120 rupees in your pocket you are learning and you are given uh, 300 rupees more money remaining running and running now how will your grandma come to know that your kinetic energy is more and more <laughs> your grandma have to stop it, stop you by the time you enter into your house because you will have to enter the house with all sanitizer and cleaning yourself so grandma will spend energy in stopping you that will tell you how to the kind how does the kinetic energy is now the energy your grandma has to spend the energy that the battery has to spend to stop you to stop the electrons directly proportional to the money that your father gives isn't it more the money that your father gives more the money you will have remaining and the more energy your grandma has to have to stop you because you will be running with more and more happiness similarly here similar thing happening here um so shall i put on some light because it's raining heavily outside i'll put on one light okay you can't see otherwise yeah can you see now little bit yes if not i will conclude now so otherwise yeah you can see a little bit now right yeah now so uh with regard to this uh, um electrons coming more the frequency of incident light you have more than threshold of course it should be more than threshold otherwise electrons won't come out more the frequency you select only that fixed energy is used to remove the electrons remaining energy is used as kinetic energy and you need more stopping potential correct that means stopping potential depends on frequency of incident radiation stopping potential depends on frequency of incident radiation incident radiation correct suppose you, you uh, for example minus 4 volt can stop electrons now now i slowly increase the frequency without telling anybody i'll increase the frequency now the incoming electrons will have more and more energy if somebody start putting more and more energetic stones then you need a person with more and more energy to stop it so more frequency and light when it is incident energy of the incident light is more remaining energy is also more after removing the work function 
remaining energy is more that means kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is more and if the kinetic energy is more more energy to stop it more potential to stop it so kinetic energy depends on frequency so stopping potential depends on frequency so small glitches be ready in the next class be ready with all these definitions work function you need not worry whether you have understood it completely or not by the end of the next class you must be ready with so many graphs by the end of next two classes it must be very clear uh, when i complete the next two sessions you must be clear with all these things then if you are not clear of course you ask me questions i will clarify it but till that don't be in a worry and uh, no issues because you have not been with the, all that uh, data i have been uh, teaching you again and again this one so now you must be ready with this experiment and how does positive negative change and what happens here threshold frequency and uh, work function and uh, um, this uh, stopping potential increasing intensity increases current increasing frequency increases kinetic energy so i can have a relation right frequency increase increases kinetic energy right increases stopping potential increasing intensity for this light you can change two things you can change frequency as well as brightness when you increase brightness photoelectric current increases right this increases but when you increase frequency photoelectric current doesn't change that we were uh, uh, studying about we will study that in detail also when you get the einstein's explanation everything will be clear why it happens so einstein gave a beautiful explanation and you can understand why it is so okay increasing intensity increases the current and this this is not possible increasing frequency no increasing in uh, current increasing kinetic energy no increasing in intensity cross wise it is not possible so for the time being i'll stop uh, the explanations right we will meet in the next class with few more explanations same diagram same explanation um, uh, with the few more ideas so in i think by the end of the next class i will come to the end, uh, edge of this and and then the very next class i will finish it finish this part this part only experimental observation then we will have we will uh, just see what type of questions uh, you will have to answer in the exam how to write the answers then it becomes very clear you have to write only this much this much you have to explain definitions graphs and all one graph already we have seen intensity versus uh, uh, that uh, uh, photoelectric current right more the intensity more current so with this i am stopping this class so continue to read the book uh, don't be lazy be in touch with the topic and you will get some assignments later on uh, we are preparing it and we are trying to engage you little bit not completely in the uh, whole day so please respond to it because uh, if you are uh, very alert now then uh, the later days will be happy days otherwise once the classes start you will have plenty of work so to avoid it now please work now don't uh, neglect all these things don't say that we don't get the range and this and that you will have so many reasons to escape but uh, you are escaping from your own life remember um, uh, from you are escaping from your own achievement so don't do that hope you will do well thanks for watching my class we will see you in the next class thank you